This is News 12 Varsity's Game Time. Tonight from Archbishop Stepanak High School in White Plains, New York. It's a New York Catholic League rivalry showdown as the Gales of Iona Prep take on the Crusaders of Archbishop Stepanak. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogno along with Kevin Devaney in a sold-out standing room only. Stepanak Gym, 18th-ranked Iona Prep and 20th-ranked Stepanak meeting for the second time this year. And, Kevin, of course, this has developed into one of the great rivalries in the tri-state area. In the tri-state area. It's definitely number one in Hudson Valley. And I laughed when you said about tickets being sold out because there actually were tickets sold in advance. They started, they said tickets would be on sale Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. They never even made it to Wednesday afternoon. The tickets were all sold out. <laughs> 600 tickets went 450 here from Stepanak. 150 were sold at Iona Prep. And I actually heard some funny, I, I don't know if these are rumors or what these are, but people talking about how students bought four or five tried to sell them for you know maybe a little <laughs> profit which is uh, not surprising but actually makes you it, Lou, it more than anything it's a testament to how good the catholic league is this season how much people care about these teams and especially about these teams in the hudson valley which are ranked number one and two as we said this is the second meeting between the two teams back on january 6th the game was suspended due to a leak in the iona prep roof and it resumed a week later and stepanak overcame a five-point deficit and won the game 58-52. A five-point deficit they made up over seven days, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, <laughs> they came back in that game. Uh, and when the game resumed, it, it seems like the teams picked up where they left off. It, it looked like Iona was going to be in control. And then the fourth quarter started. And then here comes Jordan Meeks. And he was spectacular in the fourth quarter. He put Stepanek on his back. And they won that game, part of a five-game winning streak for the Crusaders. Outstanding Division I talent on the court for both teams. Iona Prep features one of the top all-around players in the Tri-State, Junior Bryce Wills, averaging 13 points a game. Bryce Wills is, you know, he's the guy in the Hudson Valley. He's the highest recruit. He's the one that, you know, when you talk about a guy getting recruited by Kansas, Kentucky, and, and you know, UNC, they're all in on Bryce Wills. And we're going to see tonight, we're going to have to see Bryce Wills accept the range as a score because when Iona Prep and Stephen met the first time, when he was scoring the basketball, they were pretty much in control of that game. Then in the fourth quarter, he didn't score. So right now, Bryce Wills is going to have a lot on his shoulders about being the playmaker he is game in, game out, but also being the scorer. Well, Stepanak also has a Division I type guard in junior, Allen Griffith. He's averaging 17 and a half points a game. Yeah, Fordham was the most recent school to come in. This is the second time they've seen him in a couple weeks. And Allen Griffith, a six foot five shooting guard, which in this area, at this level, you don't hear much very often. He's a sensational shooter. He's not a, he's not a catch and shoot guy either. He's, a, he's the guy you can create up the dribble. He scores in a variety of ways and we see him take the ball in the basket more and more as he as he gains confidence in his all-around game Stepanak gonna have to run the offense through him him and Jordan means but really Alan Griffin's the spark so we're just moments away from the opening tip Iona prep and Stepanak and it's coming up next right here on news 12 varsity's game time welcome back to Stepanak here on news 12 varsity's game time Lou Brogno Kevin Devaney as both the Gales and Crusaders are on the court. And Iona Prep coming in at 12-7 and seven on the year. Winners of three straight, ranked number 18 in our Tri-State Bowl. Last week with wins over Cardinal Hayes and All Hollow 77-35. They're playing terrific basketball at the moment. And as you take a look at their starting lineup, up front, uh, they will start Saul Caressi, the junior, six foot nine, and Josh Alexander, a junior, six foot eight. Alexander, 14.8 points per game. And Kevin, he's getting some interest from some Ivy League schools in Atlantic 10 as well. Yeah, he's been a player who came in from Carmel High School before last season to Iona Prep, made a very quick impact, but really came into his own as a college level player this season. He, we're going to see him step out, we're going to see him and Saul Caressi. The, you know, we call them post players, but they're going to step out and shoot some three pointers tonight. They're very gifted all around players, but especially perimeter shooters. In the backcourt for the Gales, Romar Reed, a 6 1 junior. Nick Brennan, who's back in the lineup. He missed the first meeting between these two teams, a 6 4 senior. And of course, Bryce Wills, the 6 5 junior, as we said, averaging 13 points per game. Now, Nick Brennan to me is, you know, we did our player to watch, and it's obviously going to be Bryce Wills. You want to watch Bryce Wills. But Nick Brennan didn't play that first game. And remember something, that he could have played when the game was resumed a week later because he was sick the first Friday night. His name wasn't in the scorebook, so it only would have been a technical foul to put him in the scorebook and let him play. Iona Prep opted not to do that, 
And then I, I think looking back, they regret that decision because obviously they lose the game. But you would have had a guy, one of your starting five, come into the game with no fouls, and, and they had foul trouble that night, but nonetheless, no Nick Brennan, Iona Prep loses. We're gonna see how much of a difference he makes tonight. Iona Prep coached by Vic Carollo in his 19th season. Of course, in the Catholic League Hall of Fame in 2016. Terrific all-around coach. I didn't joke, he said if he coached tennis, the tennis team would be good. I mean, that's pretty much the type of guy he is. He's And he's very tough on these kids, and we're gonna see it tonight. We're gonna be very close to Vic Carollo. We're gonna see how tough he is. But uh, yeah, I, I think he's as good an all-around coach in any sport in the Hudson Valley. All right, Stephen Ackrick, number 20 in the Tri-State, 13 and six. They've won seven of their last eight. In their last game, they defeated St. Raymond, 83-71. A solid effort there. And uh, their starting lineup features Jordan Means, a 6'3 senior, averaging 13.6 points per game. Junior Manaya, sophomore, 5'10". R.J. Davis, a 6'0 freshman. He's averaging over 15 points a game. Xavier Wilson, a 6'7 junior, and Alan Griffin, the 6'5 junior, averaging 17 and a half points per game, coming off a 17 point, 12 rebound performance against St. Raymond. Yeah, terrific, almost had that, I said, you know, Coach Pat Masseroni with these guys, I said, why don't you give Alan Griffin one more assist? Because anybody had triple-double. But uh, Xavier Wilson also, another guy who came close to having a triple-double. Uh, you know, with Joel Soriano out, Xavier Wilson's the, the, the impetus falls on him to be the post player, to be the rebounder, the defender inside. So we're going to see Stepanak. This is amazing, Lou, to think that this team's 13 wins when they lost two players in Jordan Tucker and Andre Hyatt, two top 100 recruits in the country in their class. Stepanak coached by Patrick Masseroni, and we're underway here at Stepanak in front of a sold-out standing room-only crowd. Iona prepping their road. Maroon uniforms tripping with gold, and they score first. Shot made by Chris Berry, who scores, and Stepanak comes right back, and it's three to two, Iona Prep, and a fast start to the game. Something Iona Prep, uh, you know, does sometimes to a fault, and they make a three-point shot, they don't come back on defense, and right there, Iona Prep uh, gets bit there by Stepanak early on. Good scouting for Stepanak. There's Bryce Wills, who takes a three-point shot. He drills it, and the Gales with a four-point lead, it's six to two. I always think that Bryce Wills is at his best when he catches and shoots. And you know, you see him dribble the ball a lot because he's a point guard, he's gonna handle the ball, but when he when he's able to get an inside out pass and just catch and shoot, and maybe he doesn't think, maybe that's part of what his shooting inconsistency has been this season. But right there, that looked pretty pure on his hands. You want to mention that Chris Berry gets the start for Iona Prep in place of Romar Reed. So Berry, a six foot senior, is on the floor for the Gales. And of course, he got the first basket of the game. Here's Owen Griffin, and double dribble. I thought someone was going to try and pass it up as a Euro step. <laughs> uh, I mean, we watched basketball how many years? All of a sudden, this new Euro thing, Euro step comes in. And I said, it's, it's, in Europe, that's what they call traveling. <laughs> Iona Prep off to a good start. They're up by the score of 6-2. to two. Just one minute gone by here in the first quarter. Here's Barry outside, flips to Wills up top. Nice Wills outside to Nick Brennan. Wills again moves it around. Turn around on the baseline, goes off the side of the rim. And Josh Alexander unable to score. Here comes stepping out. Quickly up court. Alan Griffin flips it around to Manaya. Dribbling in is Wilson. He flips it into the corner. And a three-point shot drilled by Alan Griffin. And he makes it a one-point game. The driving kick that both of these teams employ in their offense. It's on full display here early on. And right there, Wilson just drew an extra defender. Trying to go baseline, kick it right out to Alan Griffin. He can't leave Alan Griffin alone. He's going to burn you right there, 6-5. This rolls between the circles. And he hands to Brennan. Nick Brennan, outstanding three-point shooter. Dribbling in, stop, pop, and drop for Bryce Wills. A beautiful, smooth shot. And right now, Stepanak didn't see the best of Bryce Wills that first time around. And we're helping us in here to see some pretty good versions of him. Nice maneuver there. Jordan Means with an excellent pass. The drop off, the, the drop off bounce pass there to Xavier Wilson. Xavier Wilson, maybe a couple weeks ago, wasn't expecting that pass. And right there, he gets the bucket out of it. Jordan Means, a third team all Catholic League performer last year. Outstanding player in a lot of different areas. Averaging over 13 points per game. But a playmaker as well. Turnaround jumper goes in and out, taken 
by Iona Krupp, and here comes Stephanie quickly up court. Means outside, now flips it outside. Manaya hits, that's Junior Manaya, the sophomore. And he gives Stepanak the lead. Crusaders are up by a bucket. 18 points in barely three minutes for these two teams. This is what people sold out tickets for on Wednesday afternoon, this is what they wanted to see. A lot of offense in the first three plus minutes of the first quarter. Wills angles to the right side and hands it off to Barry. Outside Brennan, Brennan goes into Wills who slams it through. My goodness, Lou, when he elevated, I thought, oh, he might have a chance to dunk this, and he was well above the rim. He said that with two hands, easy. Stepanak trying to answer, beautiful drive by Wilson. Lou, it seems so far, the only going here, you know, we're three and a half minutes in, and Vic Rose going to call a timeout. It seems like every time Iona Prep does something, Stepanak has a response. 12 to 10, Stepanak, 423 remaining in the first, and it has been an offensive explosion in the first four minutes of this game. You know, and, and Vic Carollo is, is, that's what the timeout's about. He's sensed over the fact that they've given up so many open shots, they've allowed 12 points in a short amount of time. This is a step in a team that scores a lot in the Catholic League that if, you, if you've watched enough games in this year, you feel like as good as the league is, there's still a little bit of, there's still a little lacking defense uh, from a lot of teams, including, you know, look at State Rays. State Rays, the step in a played opening night in the second game of the season for, for step in a 100 to 98 regulation. <laughs> and that wasn't because guys were making shots from all over, which they, they were, but it was also a little bit of a lack of defense. So we're seeing uh, Iona Prep just not, not covering the floor well, not rotating well defensively, not playing passing games at all, and allowing open shots. And Stephen has to hit the ball. Well, in the early part of this game, you almost uh, get the feel, has the feel of an NBA game yeah. early on. Teams up and down the court. And of course, uh, the offensive execution has been brilliant by both teams early on. And like I say, sign me up for more of this. <laughs> Carollo has his say with the Gales. They're down by two. 4.23 remaining here in the first. As we said, both of these teams come in. Kevin playing terrific basketball. He only preps one three in a row. And stepping at seven of their last eight. That's about as good of a winning streak or a winning stretch they've had this late in the season in a couple of years. And so this program has definitely taken the next step back to where it was a few, a few years back. Jump shot from the corner, rims the basket by Alexander. And here comes Stepanak quickly. Up court, RJ Davis flips it outside. Jump shot taken by Griffin, dances off the rim. And Bryce Wills quickly up court. Wills dribbles in, kicks it back outside. Good ball movement here by the Gales. Brennan pops a three off the rim, doesn't go. And it bounces out, it'll be the Crusaders basketball. And Lou, I was talking about the fact that Stepanek has had a winning stretch through this magnitude this late in the season. Remember, you know, when the lesson they had it may have been four or five years ago, back when Tim Philp was a coach who really built this program back up to what it was in the early 2000s. And that was when they were in the lower division. Now they're in the top division of doing this. So it shows how much they've continued to grow. Nice pass inside and a two-handed jam Davis. by Xavier. Yeah, to Xavier Wilson. What a look by R.J. Davis. Remember, this kid's just a freshman. That's a, that's a gift that he has, that the vision that he has, that he's able to go at that speed and make a pass that good. Jacob Hargroves in the lineup now for Iona Prep. Then traveling is the call on the Gales. So turnover for Iona Prep. So Stepanak with a four-point lead. The Crusaders lead 14-10. Even it's in 10 seconds left in the first. What an atmosphere here at Stepanak here tonight. And the steal, coast to coast, and laying it up and in is Jacob Hargroves. Hargroves just spark off the bench. Two point game, 14 to 12. Wilson flips outside. Inside is Griffin, puts it up. Stepanak keeps it alive, and the jump shot from the corner is good. Junior Manaya. So they contest the shot there, but it was off an offensive rebound, off a second chance, and the shot still falls. 17 to 12, Stepanak leads. Crusaders with their largest lead of the game, up by five. Up top is Caressi, Saul Caressi flips into the corner. Alexander, he's looking for help, dribbles in. Mark Groves back in, good defense. 
Knocked away there by Wilson playing Alexander. Josh Alexander makes a beautiful move. And uh, a little too nice as he takes an extra step. He turned the corner and then turned another corner. And that's just <laughs> too many trips on the block for Josh Alexander. 205 left in the first. 17 to 12. Stepping in up to a good start. Here's a long three-point shot. Dances off the rim and skying for the rebound and having it knocked away is Bryce Wills. Now, the Griffin Lucky didn't get called for a foul there. That was an unfortunate foul for the pickup. And then you said falling out of bounds. Off step back and it hit Bryce Wills. A little bit of contact in the eye of Bryce Wills. That's the depth of the course. Hard Groves across the midcourt line. He gives to Wills back to the basket. Now he dribbles in, explodes, and knifes through the defense. And travels. No basket. Three travels and four possessions for Ariana Craig. 17 to 12. Stepanak still on top. A minute and a half at meeting. Anaya flips it back outside. Picking the jump shot is Griffith. He can't hit. And then Bryce Wills brings it across the midcourt line. Comes to Brennan. Way up top. Wide open is Alexander. He takes the jump shot, can't score. And Caressi puts up the offensive rebound and draws the foul. So Saul Caressi. <laughs> another traveling call. You were ready to call a foul. And I, I thought to myself, I think he's motioning another travel. Four travel calls in five possessions. That one off an offensive rebound there by Saul Caressi. The long arm of Saul Caressi. You know, Lou, when, when, a, when a big man like these two guys steps out to three, it, you always marvel at it. When they go out and they miss, you're like, they should be inside rebounding because I Iona has not got many offensive rebounds. I'm going to see a call here. Yeah, it's a foul against the Gales. That'll be the second team foul. Foul is on Romar Reed. That's his first. Second team foul on the Gales. Shot floated up by Jordan Means. Does it go? And here comes Wills. Wills across the midcourt line. Flips it outside the steal. Up ahead to Means. Means puts it up. Can't score. And Romar Reed comes up with the rebound for the Gales. He brings it across. Being played tough by Means. Josh Alexander. He draws Alan Griffin. And Alexander with a nice move. Puts it up and in. Two guys trying to go in opposite directions, trying to go through each other. And it's Alan Griffin and Josh Alexander got a little tied up. Referee wanted to bring them together. They chose not to, and they're just going to resume play here. Kai Johnson checks into the game for the first time for Stepanak, the 5'9 senior. So he's in the backcourt now with Alan Griffin. Ned Johnson brings it across. 25 seconds left in the quarter, and it's a three-point lead for the Crusaders. An active first quarter here, 31 points between the two teams. Hudson in the game as well for stepping out. He's got the basketball. Foot Junior, Means in the corner. Here's Johnson, back to Hudson. Delivers Eddie Sanchez. Here's the shot put up, doesn't go, and that'll do it. So the first quarter comes to an end. A lively first quarter of play. Stepanak leading Iona Prep 17-14. Second quarter upcoming here on News 12, Varsity's Game Time. Welcome back to News 12, Varsity's Game Time. Lou Brogno, Kevin Devaney here at Sold Out Stepanak, where the Crusaders lead Iona Prep 17-14. I, I laugh every time you say sold out because uh, I just think to myself, there's, there's people waiting outside these doors that couldn't get in here today, and kids trying to sell tickets for 20 bucks. And I said, do you penalize a kid as a school, or you know, he's, he's you know, it's capitalistic you know, way of thinking, and trying to make some money. The tickets don't say no resale on them. I didn't think to put that on the tickets. Offensive rebound put up by Wilson doesn't go, and Iona Prep will bring it across. Gales a chance to. Whittle the deficit to one or tie the game with three. Opening minutes, Lewis. Seems like seven I couldn't miss. Now they can't make anything. They still lead by three. Reed has it knocked away. Tough defense here by the Crusaders. And they get the ball out to Johnson. Makai Johnson puts it up and an offensive foul. 
Taking the charge was Jacob Hargroves. Uh, you know, Pat Masseroni, stepping the coach, was a little upset about that call. It looked like there was a little bit of a slide there to draw that offensive foul. And it was a tough, maybe, maybe a no call there, but instead it goes against Stepanak. Only really the first team foul. All the scoring, no fouling in the first quarter. Side is Reed, who flips into Alexander. Josh Alexander with a reverse on the baseline. Man, it's his hands, and his footwork gotten so good, and his hands have gotten so strong to be able to put that up so gently. That makes it a 17-16 game. Stepanak whistles the ball around the perimeter, pulling up for the short jumper off the back rim. Doesn't go. Peyton Hudson. And here come the Gales. Up ahead, Hargraves. Jacob Hargraves flips it back outside to Wills. Brennan tosses inside to Alexander. Not quite sure how he caught that basketball between three defenders. It's a one-point Stepanak lead. Long jump shot from the top of the key. Good, Allen Griffin drills a three. And it's a four point step in that lead, 20 to 16. This is what Allen Griffin has done basically all season, Lou. It's, it's you know, they go through these periods where they may not be hitting shots, may not be getting good looks at the basket, then he does something to get them back on track. And that was a big one, and getting Iona back on track. His little fade away through the like jumper there by Bryce Wills. He makes it a two point game, 20 to 18, 545 left first half. Again, it's Griffin. Oh, Burry's another three. He has great confidence on his straightaway three-point shot. I always wonder why he doesn't take more of those. He has confidence in all of his three-point shots. That one in particular always seems to fall. And that's a five-point lead again for Stepanak. Crusaders' largest lead of the game. Here's Brennan, top of the key. Goes into Alexander. Moves in against <laughs> Xavier Wilson, who blocks the basketball. Flips out to Johnson. Griffin thought about that three. Flips it around to Eddie Sanchez, a sophomore. Ball knocked away and taken away by Wills. Bryce Wills behind the back dribble. Nice through the defense and has it knocked away beautifully by Wilson. He flips to Griffin. Pops a three off the rim, though. And Brennan tracks down the rebound. Here come the Gales. End-to-end -end basketball. <laughs> Jump shot from the corner doesn't go. And the ball knocked out of bounds. A timeout called by Stepanak. Lou, we're in no danger of the, the shot clock running out of hand <laughs> I mean, the, the guy who's running it might as well just go to his car or sit back and watch the rest of this game because it's not going to come into play. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we haven't even seen single digits. <laughs> I mean, this is when these two teams play. So 4.38 left to go in the first half. Stepanak ahead by five. Oh, the pace, scoring pace has slowed a little bit after those furious first five minutes. Stepanak with a, a five-point lead, 438 remaining. And Stepanak, as we said, putting it 13-6 and six on the year. Take a look at the standings in the New York division. And Stepanak, 9-3 and three in the league. St. Raymond's just a half game back at 9-4. and four. Now, St. Michael at 8-5, and, and Iona Prep at 8-5. and five as well. So obviously a huge game here for Iowa Prep. Stepping out trying to keep the lead in the division with a victory here tonight. 23 to 18. 438 remaining here second quarter. RJ Davis flips to Sanchez top of the key. Matt Davis whips it around. This is Means outside. Hudson, now you're down to 10 on the shot clock as Iona Prep oh ranks up the There we go. Of course. They must have heard me during the timeout. Five seconds on the shot clock. They finally shoot. RJ Davis drives the lane and draws the foul. That's the third team foul on the Gales here in this first half. Call it on Zedek Farrell, that's his first. And R.J. Davis is at the line, he will shoot two. There's a freshman averaging 15.2 points per game. He hits the first. 
Checking into the game, Junior Manaya for the Crusaders. Here Sanchez takes a seat. And Davis' second free throw is good. Good form by the freshman. He hits both. And Stepanak has its largest lead of the game. The Crusaders are up by seven. It's 25 to 18. That pass knocked away and off of the Crusaders. It'll be Iona prep basketball. Price will sat for a few minutes. They want to get back in there before this lead. This deficit gets any worse. Down by seven. Chris Wills comes back in. He'll trigger in on the baseline. It's very back in the game for the Gales as well. And Alan Griffin checks back in for the Crusaders. Very. Flips outside to Reed. Bounce pass comes inside. Stolen in the corner. A beautiful play in the corner by Jordan Means. Naya quickly up court and Means gets it back. Here is Griffin. Long three. Goes off the top of the backboard. Of course, out of bounds. Once it hits the wires up there. But, you know, we're seeing just the quickest of triggers tonight for Alan Griffin. He has no fear, and you know, he's a guy who thrives in an environment like this. This is what he wants to play in. This is why he came to step in. He left Austin at the last season. Spent one year in Austin, moved from Chicago. Wanted to get a little bit in the higher levels of, of high school basketball in the area, so he leaves Austin to come to Stepanak and just instantly fit in. I, I, I wondered, would there be any sort of transition period? Would he have to really work for time more? Because he didn't spend a lot of time. He came in for the fall, and right away, he made his presence felt. And, you know, basketball is a, it's a language. And he spoke it coming in, and very fluent in it here now. In the corner, very takes the shot, does it go? And the rebound put in by Griffin. Bounce pass up ahead to R.J. Davis. Dribbles in. A burst to the hoop. Can't score. Wilson gets the rebound. Puts it up. And traveling, traveling is the call. Wilson was maybe trying to pump fake there and just moved his right foot. So a travel call there. And a good job by Josh Alexander to alter that shot. Three minutes, five seconds left here in the first half. Stepping out with it. A seven point lead and turning the ball over. Called against Iota Prep. We've seen a lot of turnovers here in this first half. Traveling, double dribbles. Could that be you know, a little butterflies in the stomach? Could that be a little nerves? Jump shot doesn't go. By Griffin and the rebound pulled down by Alexander. It's very pulls up for a three. And it's in and out. Rebound is pulled down by Griffin. Off the head comes Stepanak. In the corner, Manaya. He puts the brakes on. Flips it back outside. Great ball movement by the Crusaders. But that shot off the mark by Xavier Wilson. And here comes Iona Prep. Farrell flips it back outside. Caressi for three. Saul Caressi. Just long arms when he shoots that basketball. Three point rainbow shot that barely touches the net as it goes through. I'm going to put back with four. Although, Lou, Stephen, I've struggled so much offensively, and you're wondering how I'm going to put still down in this game. They just can't get anything consistently either. Two minutes remaining here in the first half. It's 25 21. Griffin tries to flip it and throws it out of bounds. Baseline drive, and that you know the kickout pass was only at the top of the key. There was no one in the far corner where Alan Griffin was maybe expecting somebody, and he had no choice but to basically throw the ball out of bounds. Iona Prep with the basketball. The Gales will bring it across. Under two minutes now remaining in the first half. A chance to cut it down to two. Down by eight points at one point. Wills, Alexander in the corner. Three-pointer doesn't go, taken by Farrell. Here comes Stepanak, four on two. Laid up, doesn't go. And now Iona Prep the other way. Very dribbles in. 
He flips it back to Alexander, floats it up, and it's an offensive foul. Alexander had no clue that Peyton Hudson was standing right there. He set himself up perfectly to take that offensive foul, sold it with the fall, and Alexander just turns and the court. Ayanna Prep really just missing opportunity after opportunity here by Stepanek missing shot after shot. So a minute 22 left in the first half. This game started off on fire for both teams, but things really have slowed down here in the second quarter. And it's not the pace, Kevin, that's slowed down. The pace is still fast as ever. The problem has been turnovers and just really disjointed offensive possessions. The pace of the officiating of the whistle has been the only thing that's been kept in at consistent pace. That was a, a double foul called there against Jordan Meese and Sal Caressi. They're right in their view. I've seen a lot worse go you know, not be called double foul. So. Tough in high school. You only get five. Two, two key players for both sides. And Jordan Means has not really gotten going yet for Stepanak. And Alan Griffin will come in. And Wilson will go sit. It's five team fouls now on the owner prep. Three for the Crusaders. I think Stepanak basically go with a five guard offense here. RJ Davis tries to set up the play. In the corner, Manaya. Back outside, Hudson to Davis, rather. Davis back to Hudson. Seven on the shot clock. Good defense here by the Gales. In the corner, Jordan Means for three. Doesn't go. The rebound put up, and it's put up and in. Alan Griffin, Alan Griffin with the basket. The polo stick legs of Alan Griffin just kept going back up there trying to tip that bat ball in, and he got it. Here's Wills, puts up a short jumper, it doesn't go, and the offensive rebound tapped up and in. Sal Caressi with the basket. 27-23, four point game, 22 seconds left, shot clock has been turned off. Let's see if Stepanak holds for the last shot, appears they will. 15 seconds left. And dribbling in, beautiful drive by R.J. Davis. And that shot goes off the back rim of the first half, comes to an end. So an exciting first half of play, end-to-end -end basketball. Ed Stepanak goes into the locker room with a six-point lead. And the freshman is the guy who does it at the end. He just drives in there. You know, you have a 5'10 freshman driving on a 6'8 junior. And R.J. Davis, it just shows the poise and the confidence this young man has. He goes in there and makes it a 29-23 game at the half. So our score at halftime is Stepanak 29, Iona Prep 23. Second half upcoming here on News 12 Varsity's Game Time. Welcome back to News 12 Varsity's Game Time. Lou Brogno, Kevin Devaney here at a jam-packed Stepanak High School gym where the Crusaders lead Iona Prep 29 to 23 and a wild offensive explosion in that first half but things kind of slowed down and settled down a little bit in the second quarter Kevin yeah and I, you expected you know they weren't going to score at the pace they were at early on and you know on one end of the floor you had a step in a team that didn't really make shots and then you had an Iona prep team that just never got any sort of open look or flow of an offense so I don't know if you're more alarmed if you're Iona prep the way the first half went or this you know the latter half of it or if you're stepping act, you feel like you should be up by more points. This is a very strange first half for these two teams, but very similar to what they had the first time around uh, back on January 6th. Iona Prep coming in at 12 and 7 on the year, ranked 18th in our tri state poll, and Archbishop Stepanak, 13 and 6, ranked number 20. Iona Prep last year getting to the quarterfinals of the. Uh, Catholic League Tournament losing to Malloy. The program that has had great success throughout the years. 2015, they were New York Catholic League champions. State champions in 2012. I, I think, Lou, they're the best team in the league. I mean, from, I, I've seen pretty much everybody. I haven't seen Bishop Laughlin, but I've seen everybody else, and I, I, I'm pretty confident that Malloy is the team that I think should win the championship, but with the way the league is, if they lost in the quarterfinals, I wouldn't be shocked. I think that Saturday, 
uh, that, that quarterfinal day when they have four games at Fordham University. If any event's going to sell out, it should be that one. That, that is as good of a quadruple header as there is in the Tri-State this season. So second half begins. Iona Prep moving left to right on your screen, but now Jordan Means quickly moving right to left as he steals it and slams it through. No basket. He stepped out of bounds, I believe, on the near sideline. He figured, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him there to go down there and make sure he does make that jump. Because <laughs> you don't want to delay the game up and, and miss it. But that was a sign. That may have been a sign right there. A very quiet first half on both ends of the floor for Jordan Means. And he's not going to be kept quiet for very long. Here's Bryce Wills up top. Wills dribbles in, knifes through the defense, floats it up. Ball tapped around underneath, put up, and a foul called on the Crusaders. Not many foul shots taken in the first half of this game. Iona Prep did not get to the line at all. So Alexander will get to the line for the Gales. Josh Alexander, 6'8", junior, averaging nearly 15 points a game. We talked about the fact that he's getting, getting some looks from Atlantic 10 schools and Ivy League schools. And, of course, what does that tell you? He's a smart boy. Uh, yeah, he does his, He does it in the classroom as well. You know, Lou, well, I think even the smartest of players in the court, uh, Josh Alexander, would say, hey, we've got a lot more tall kids than Stepanek has. Why are we not using our size to our advantage? <laughs> Why do we have 6'8", 6'9", 6'5", and 6'5", shooting threes in the perimeter? And on that first possession for Iona, he saw Bryce Will's attack, and right there inside on the paint was Alexander and Caressi and Nick Brennan, who's 6'5", also. So you maybe want to see Iona Prep in the second half attack the basket more and use their length which is a distinct advantage. Alan Griffin with a nice move in the lane but can't connect. And Iona Prep now down by just four. And the Gales push it up. Gressi in the corner. Goes inside. Alexander as it's stripped away beautifully by Griffin. Means back to Griffin off the glass. No! The rebound pulled down by Nick Brennan. And it gives to Caressi. Alexander, turnaround jumper, doesn't go. And the ball knocked out of bounds off of the Gales. On the way in tonight, uh, Vic Carollo just came strong to the hallway. was watching the JV game. I saw him for a few minutes. And uh, I said, did I read your schedule right? Are you really playing here tonight and then at St. Anthony's tomorrow? <laughs> in Jersey, like the St. Anthony's. And he said, yeah, he goes, this is just the schedule you know, they wanted to play. They gave me a date. And I, it was either a yes or no. And I said, I'm not going to pass it up. It's an honor to play a program of that magnitude. So they're going out there tomorrow and play St. Anthony's. The ball gets knocked around here. But uh, a pretty tough, you know, I won't even say 24 hours. It's less than that. That's for sure. And there's Davis outside. Conversely, Stepanak doesn't play until next Friday. Mount St. Michael's here. That game will also be broadcast live on newsclubvarsity.com. Hopefully the stream three-point shot falls there for Jordan Means. He gets his first field goal of the night. And hopefully the stream of that game works a little better than tonight. So we want to apologize and appreciate our viewers who, who stuck through us there as we had some technical issues. We didn't have technical issues. Somebody else had some technical issues, but they're all resolved now. 32-25, seven-point lead now again for Stepanak. Bounce pass to Alexander. He turns against two defenders and has it blocked underneath by Xavier Wilson. Here comes Means. Oh, and back the other way is Wills to block it. Anaya pulls up for the jumper, doesn't go. And Caressi tracks down the rebound. Lou, I thought for sure that was going to be Caressi at the block. It was Wills. Wills to Brennan. And Nine. traveling is the call. And they're letting him play. I, I mean, we had... The thing, and the, neither team got to the bonus in the first half. We have one foul and <laughs> between the two teams in almost three minutes here in the second. Kevin, I gotta tell you though, I, I, I think I've seen more traveling tonight than I've seen the entire season. It's like I put on some backpacks on these kids. There's Davis. And pulling up for the jumper off the front rim. It doesn't go. Was Wilson, had a good look. Wilson coming off a big game, 19 points, 13 rebounds against St. Raymond's, but off the mark here this evening. We're seeing Brennan be a lot more active on the defensive glass in the first half. Another adjustment Iana Prep has made. Wills back to the basket looking for a cutter. Now he turns around. 
and takes a three-point shot off the back rim, doesn't go. Quickly, Crusaders come up court. Anaya knifes through the defense. Davis now takes it on the baseline, is hammered there by Caressi. I don't think it was intentional. I think it was just RJ Davis being a lot smaller than the two guys he ran into, but he hit the floor really hard. It's good to see him spring back up. And it was good to see him have a little scowl on his face. He was upset that he got hit. They call it on Josh Alexander, not Caressi. First team foul on the Gales, and Davis at the line hits the first, don't get another. He has a chance here to give Stepanak its largest lead of the game. And Leona Prep is going to bring Spencer Curdo into the game, who's their three-point specialist off the bench. He's a guy who may hit two, one or two threes in the game, and it's usually to try and jumpstart the offense, which we're now looking at about seven or eight minutes straight where the offense has been pretty, pretty stagnant. 34-25. It's a nine-point lead for the Crusaders. It is their largest lead of the game. Jump shot outside, good! That's Romar Reed who hits a three. I'm gonna start doing a study, Lou, about catch and shoot at the high school level with some kids. I mean, we've seen so many guys trying to dribble around and put up a shot and miss, and we've seen a lot of guys tonight just catch the ball and put it right in. Nice dish inside the Means, and he draws the foul. So Jordan Means will go to the line. Fouls on Spencer Curdo, that's his first. Second team foul on the Gales. So Jordan Means to the line. 6-3 senior will shoot two. And his first is no good. Short. Jordan Means does not totally look like himself tonight, as we said. So I'll make a three-pointer early in this quarter. Strong finish. Right there, taking it to the rack on the foul to go to the free throw line. Another free throw is up and in. It's one of two. Eddie Sanchez checks back into the game for Stepanak. Alexander looking for help. Now he dribbles in against two defenders. Still looking for help. Means all over him defensively, but I think he got called with his hand in the cookie jar there. Alexander does not get the benefit of a lot of calls. I, you know, I, I've always been a fan of his, and, and somebody who might be listening might say, oh, you're always talking about Josh Alexander. And, but I, I do think that he, they, being so big and strong, guys can hit him, and he may not move and, and, or flinch as much as other guys would, so he doesn't get as many calls. Each team with two team fouls here in the second half. There's Wills, top of the key. Again, good ball movement here by the Gales. Wills, he pops a long three off the back rim, no. And Wills gets to the loose ball and drives and draws the foul. And that was all really set up by the respect that the Stepanek defense had for Spencer Curdo. As soon as the ball got to him in the corner, this is a guy who didn't play a minute or a second in the first half. And as soon as he got the ball in his hands from the three-point line, two guys converged on him. And that was by design. It was allowed them to I only kick the ball around and get it inside, get the offensive rebound, and get a foul. Bryce Wills at the line, hits the first. Wills, as many as 15 offers, might be more than that at this point. But uh, the likes of Villanova, <laughs> Indiana. Freak athlete that he is. Those are some pretty good offers. Alan Griffin. Brings it back outside. It's a five-point game, 35 to 30. Three-point shot from the corners. Good, nothing but net for Hudson. And suddenly the league goes back to eight for Stepanak. They've kept it at, you know, four or better most of the way, and now matching one of the largest leagues of the night. 38 to 30. Alexander puts it on the floor. Turn around, baby hook doesn't go. Ball back tapped outside. Here's Hudson. Hudson quickly across the line. Good look inside, laid up and in by Xavier Wilson. And the lead is 10, largest bulge of the game now for Archbishop Stepanak. You know, Iona might be bigger, but Stepanak is clearly stronger. And Wilson's one of those guys. Alexander lost the handle. 
Ball is still on the floor, and finally, a whistle. So the possession to Stepanak. So Peressi and Jacob Hargraves check back into the lineup for the Gales. 2.16 remaining in the third. It's a 10-point lead for Stepanak. Here's Davis, bounce pass. Means, backing in. Determined to put it up, and he does. It's tapped up. Here comes Wills. They want to prep quickly up court. Wills puts the brakes on. Hargraves draws the defense and then brings it back outside. Preston trying to post up inside. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, nice backdoor pass to Brennan. But he can't hit. Looks like he got a finger in the eye. Vic Carollo wants to know where the foul is. And I think he's right. They've let these teams play, which is a great thing. And you hear so much people criticize officials for, for, not, for calling too many fouls. And tonight, I think the physicality level has just been a little bit too much. Vic Carollo jumped off the bench. And he's still talking to the official. Stepanak basketball. And Sanchez has it knocked away. Good play by Caressi. They want to prep down by 10. Wills flips it outside. Hargraves. Drives in, and a foul. Reach in foul on Stepanak. <laughs> I'm sure Vic Carollo said, had a, said about, that's about time you called one or something, and the official uh, yeah, he didn't like wasn't, it. yeah, he didn't like that too much. <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's referee Billy Sacco. He's refereed one of the most famous moments in Westchester basketball history. Good point shot goes up, it's off the mark, way off the mark. He was the official who reversed the call on the Mount Vernon near a shell game and called the half-board shot. Good. I was there for that. <laughs> it was a good day. It was a fun day. Here's Brennan dancing and weaving his way in and draws the foul. Hey, listen. Squeaky wheel, what do they say? And, and Vic Carrillo was a very squeaky wheel a few minutes ago, and now <laughs> they've called three fouls in a couple possessions. So. <laughs> So Nick Brennan will go to the line. This is four senior. They want to prep down by 10. They need these free throws. Still a long way to go. Hope for quarter upcoming. And the first is good. RJ Davis back in the game. Xavier Wilson comes out. Jordan Means back in. Junior Manaya. Heads to the bench. We've seen a lot of minutes tonight out of R.J. Davis, who's battling a cold. Father came over and said he might be having the flu. So it's good to see him out there playing hard, playing strong. He's performed pretty well, considering he might be a little under the weather. And Brennan lost the ball off his knee. He hit one up two. It's a nine-point game, 40 to 31. Iona has not gone on any sort of run this whole game. Under a minute to go now in the third quarter. And remember, they had six points in the first minute of the game. And since then, it's been tough sledding. It's about a nine-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here. Long three-point shot from the corner. Traveling is the call. All of a sudden, I got a press getting every call. Ty Johnson took that shot. Dylan Frost checks into the game for the first time for Stepanak. 
He obviously is a fan club sitting next to us. <laughs> <laughs> we were very excited to see Dylan come into the game. <laughs> 10 seconds remaining as Wills picks back at the clock. And he still takes a look. Five seconds. Brennan, long three-point shot. And then going up is Caressi, tipped up, doesn't go. And the third quarter comes to an end. So Stepanak heads to the fourth with a healthy lead. The Crusaders are up by nine. Stepanak 40, Iona Prep 31. Fourth quarter upcoming on News 12, Varsity's Game Time. Welcome back to News 12, Varsity's Game Time. Glad you could join us here at Archbishop Stepanak High School on this Friday evening. Lugrogno, Kevin Devaney. Great rivalry matchup between the Crusaders, ranked number 20, and the 18th ranked Iona Prep Gales. Right now, though, Stepanak enjoying a nine point lead. So Iona Prep has a hill to climb here as we begin the fourth. I thought the building was on fire there for a moment with Pat Mastroni screaming about something. And, uh, <laughs> foul that he called there. And off. Iona is doing a lot better job of the offensive glass, and we saw in the final seconds of that third quarter, two chances to tip the ball in, and both miss. So Iona is just—it's it's been a night of missed opportunities for the Gales. And I said it at halftime, and when they were down six, I'll say it now in the fourth quarter, they're down nine. They're lucky to only be down nine. We saw Caressi at the line, and he'll shoot two. Well, the first is good. And Stepanak continues the revolving door of substitution. Xavier Wilson back in, and RJ Davis back in as well. And the second is on the way. No good off the front rim. And Brennan gets the rebound and is back tapped out nicely by Josh Alexander. Dressy inside, back to Brennan for three. No, off the back rim. Second time, Lou, they've made the front first of two free throws, missed the second at the offensive rebound, and missed a three-point shot. So it's like they have so many chances here. Down eight. Still plenty of time, seven and a half remaining in the fourth. <laughs> Davis outside. There's a long three-point shot off the front rim. Doesn't go by Peyton Hudson. But a long rebound comes all the way out to Griffin. He can't hit. Four, five maroon jerseys in the paint there for rebounds. And it's almost they're at a point where they're just inviting Stefanik to shoot, trying to make them a one-and-done possession. There was a, a just a long rebound out. Trying to use that length. And they've actually fallen further back. Caressi puts it up. Can't connect. Griffin puts the brakes on. 6.45 left in the fourth quarter. Eight point lead for the Crusaders, 40 to 32. Stefanak taking a little breather here on offense. 10 on the shot clock now. Triple team back outside Hudson. Two seconds, one at the buzzer, puts it up, doesn't go. They should hear what the, the shot clock sounds like. There's Wills. Outside, Brennan dishes inside, <laughs> gets it back outside. And now turn around and a foul. Xavier Wilson thought he had a, a clean block. But Josh Alexander will go to the line. That's frustrating for Xavier Wilson. He played really good defense that entire possession. And I think he got all ball, and they're going to call a foul on him, a shooting foul. And it's actually a 17 foul against Stepanek as well. So they're Iona the bonus. And the free throw doesn't go. He'll get another. That was weird. Uh, he's a very good free throw shooter. I don't know why it seemed like he rushed. He was leaning forward. And second doesn't go. This is both. Still an eight-point game. Some would say, Lou, the ball doesn't lie. It was a tough call against Xavier Wilson, and he went over two at the line. 5.50 left in the fourth. Davis stands at midcourt. 
15 on the clock now. It's like New Jersey basketball. It's gonna let the, the clock run. There is no shot clock, of course, in here. Now they're down to eight. Hudson, five on the clock. Tough shot put up by Davis. Doesn't go. And a rebound, Iona Prep. 5.20 left in the fourth. Empty possession after empty possession for Stepanak. Caressi, short jumper, doesn't go. It's one and out for the Gales. Means. Davis in the corner, off the mark. Means going up for the rebound and a foul called on Iona Prep. Nice job there by Means, getting in position for the rebound. No, he could grab it, so his two hand tapped it. And they're going to call a foul, 13 foul. Not shooting foul, so the Crusaders inbound on the baseline. Davis and Manaya up top. Well play catch. As Stepanak looks to work the clock here in the fourth quarter. Fifteen seconds. Davis back outside. Now Hudson delivers to Wilson, puts it up and draws the foul. Worked it all the way down to four seconds on the shot clock. That was a long possession. It's been a very long possession for Stepanak. They got a fresh 35 off on the foul. Worked on the nine. So we're at 430 left. Suddenly this is time's running out here for Iona Prep, but I got a prep team that can't score anyway, so. 14 foul on the Gales, and at the line is Xavier Wilson, and hits the first. Wilson, 6'7", junior. It was a chance to put the Crusaders back up by 10, and he does not. So it goes off the front rim, so it's a nine point lead, 41-32. Wells, long three off the rim, no, and foul will be called on Stepanak. Patrick Massaroni thought that should have been a jump ball. Officials don't agree, and they call the foul on Alan Griffin. That's the eighth team foul on Stepanak, so it's one and one for Caressi. Gets the first. Iona had four missed free throws in this quarter, which now catching up with them a little bit. Second on the way, good. Now down by seven, so. And a timeout is called. 418 remaining in the fourth. 41 34 Stepanak. Well, following the timeout, it'll be Stepanax basketball. Crusaders are up by seven, 41 to 34. I'm gonna go into full court pressure for the first time. And a beautiful steal and feed by Bryce Wills. Hargrave's got the basket. It's 
It's a five point game, 41-36. So Iona Prep just trying to make their defense be the source of their offense here and going right to the press, getting a steal out of it. Long arms at Bryce Wills at the top of this pressure. Full court man. Still got half of the fourth quarter remaining, 4.07 left. Again, they go for the trap in the corner. This time Stepanak gets it across. Hudson flips it outside. Davis dribbles in, knifes through the defense and scores. And Pat Masseron takes time out. He says, all right, now I need to go to my book here and figure out how we're going to break this, this press a little bit because that clearly was an uncomfortable couple of possessions for Stepanak. 3.56 left, fourth quarter, and it's a seven-point game, 43-36. Wonder if Stepanak will go back to basically a five guard offense. Xavier Wilson's played too well to take him off the floor tonight. He's been too good inside, especially defensively. Uh, disrupting shots, blocking shots. Iona Prep has missed so many layups, so many, so many baskets in the paint. And then that last one, it looked like it was going to roll out. It finally rolled in, and you thought, okay, maybe the tide's turning here for Iona Prep. There's still plenty of time. 3.56 left. In the fourth quarter, only down by seven. It seems like it's such a larger deficit because of the way that Iona Prep has shot the basketball here tonight. But it's only seven points. It's Brennan. Ball knocked away. Last touched by Stepanak. It'll be Iona Prep basketball. Brennan, good look inside to Caressi. Nice play. Ball never touched the floor. That's what Iona Prep does. And then when they, when they, I watched me Byron Hills. At the county center in the slam dunk final. I mean, you, you looked at this team, I mean, slam dunk opening round, and the ball did touch the floor a lot in that game. I mean, they were just so good at, at using their size, their length, and moving the ball around, and a couple passes, cooking the balls inside for a layup. So only a five point game now. This lead for Stepanak, they kept it always at five or more, you know, between four and eight, really, but never totally felt comfortable. I guess that's a testament to the game being still scoring. Andre Davis, inside they go, and a foul, reach-in foul. And two quick ones, looks like you're going to be, against, nope, not going to be against South Caressi, it's going to be against number two, Romar Reed, now it's a one and one. Yeah, Iona prep over the limit now, so Stepanak will be shooting from here on out. R.J. Davis at the line, it will be one and one. It's a five-point game, 43-38. He hits both. They'll go back up by seven. And his first is no good. Alexander gets the rebound, hands it off to Wills. Here's Brennan. Back to Bryce Wills. Brennan to Wills, dribbles in. Brennan pops a three off the mark. Way off the mark, and the rebound gonna go to yeah, RJ Davis who gets hit hard in the face. And gets up slowly, but appears to be okay. <laughs> foul on Wills, that's his second. Eighth team foul on Iona Prep. So Davis to the line. Stepanak keeps all the rest of their players back on de defense. Yeah. Even with the miss in the front end before, he makes it. Maybe they're confident that he wasn't going to miss the front end or miss both again. Six-point game, 44-38. And second good as well. And he comes out. Peyton Hudson comes in. I got to tell you, R.J. Davis, impressive young player. Uh, the poise of the freshman. The skills are there. Obviously, there's a lot of freshmen who are skilled. But there's not many that can come into an atmosphere like this and play well. He's done it all season long. 
It's a seven point game, long three. That one rattles in and out by Wills. Went halfway down the cylinder. And that's an offensive foul as Alan Griffin threw an elbow. There was a lot of arm swinging in there as he was trying to clear out the space. And I think one of them might have been a little bit too much. Alexander also might have sold it pretty well. And Iona Prep, though, just can't make a three-point shot. They just can't consistently make three-point shots. They're not going to shoot their way back into this game. They've got to keep going like they did, um, a couple of possessions to go where they work the ball inside. So the Gales will throw in on the baseline. Will's looking for help. He goes long down the court and going up to get it with Hargraves. Look at the wide receiver there against the defensive back. Wills outside, two and a half left. Brennan dribbles in. Short jumper, good. Brennan gets inside, uses his length, uses his height to clear off some space to get a good shot off. Hudson tries to deliver it back and throws it away. Here comes Hargraves. He takes it to the hoop and scores in the foul. A chance for a three-point play. And I, I'm thinking that Hargraves is making a bad move here going to Xavier Wilson. And Wilson just was on his heels too much and enough contact for the foul and Hargraves, give him credit, had the guts to go down the length of the floor. And maybe Hargraves sensed that this is a, a, a potential turning point of the game. Another empty possession for Stepanak. They push the ball to the floor. He, got, he gets one-on-one. -on -one. He takes advantage. Jacob Hargraves at the line. He'll get one here. And he can't connect. Rebound pulled down by Griffin. It's a three-point game. 45-42. And Romar Reed immediately fouls Jordan Means. That's the ninth team foul on Iona Prep. So it's a one and one. Iona Prep's been going offense, defense with Brennan and Alexander as much as they can. They both check back in. Jordan Means, the senior, will go to the line. And again, it's a one and one. And the free throw, no good. Rebound pulled down by Wills. Up ahead to Brennan. A three pointer can tie the game. Hargraves. Brennan. Here's Wills. Dribbles in. Flips in the corner. Caressi. Here's Hargraves for three off the mark. Pulled down underneath by Alexander. He puts it up. Can't score. And a foul in the corner called on Iona Prep. RJ Davis playing with something in his nose to stop bleeding. That's how physical the second half of this game has been. And you know, Iona Prep worked the ball, worked the shot clock down, tried to get off a good three-point look. They get it to Hargraves at the top, and in well, that situation, Caressi, you feel like Caressi should have been taking that shot in the, in the corner. Good job by the step nine defense to recover after the collapse of the interior when Bryce Wills went to the middle, trying to get it back out to Caressi for an open shot. So, at the line, as Davis hits the first. Back to a two-possession game with 140 left. Second good as well. Five point game, 47-42. A minute 35 left in the fourth. Wills in the corner. Caressi for three. So look, they won in the last possession. They couldn't get. Means over pursued right there. And left Caressi open in the corner, and he's not going to miss wide open. So 129 left, and Iona Prep as close as they've been since the first half. We take a look up at that scoreboard, 47-45. It just seems remarkable that Iona Prep is in this game. <laughs> I said it all night about how they were lucky to be in the game down six at the half, lucky to be in the game down nine in the, in the start of the fourth quarter, and here they are now, only down two. And you know, this is a game where Steph and I just let Iona hang around, and. They struggle with the length. Now they got to close it out, most likely at the free throw line. A minute 
29 left in Iona Prep. Down by just a bucket. Give well, Stepanek credit. I mean, we're, we're making it seem like Iona's playing poorly, and that's the only reason why Stepanek's winning. Stepanek defensively has limited the open looks for Iona Prep. Open looks that were there against All Hollows on Tuesday, and were there for the most part against Cardinal Hayes this past week on Saturday at home. So. Iona Prep has been, has been a team a little bit this season, Lou, that's taken two steps forward and one step back. They had a little bit of a struggle after winning the slam dunk at the county center, after beating Mamaronik, and then, uh, excuse me, beating uh, Byron Hills, then beating Mamaronik. And uh, they wanted to league play, and they just never were really in sync. And they've looked a little bit like they looked tonight for three quarters. And they're trying to come out here now in this final 129 and steal this victory. So Alan Griffin will toss it in on the baseline. Full court pressure here by Iona Prep. Griffin throws it away. It's intercepted by the Gales. And Vic Carello calls an immediate timeout. And a huge possession upcoming here as his team trails by two. And they have a chance to tie it or take the lead. That was a suffocating inbound there for Stepanak. You know, we talked about how there's 600 people here, probably more in a gym that barely holds 600 people. It felt like all of them were on top of you right there in that last possession. And Romar Reed does a nice job of playing defensive back and tipping that ball, spinning, getting it back and getting credit for the steal. And Vic Carollo, you know, it seems like a lot of what Iona Prep's done well tonight is, is out of set plays, out of timeouts. And he's going to try and draw something up here in this 32nd. To try and tie this game up and you know you got to wonder what it will do mentally for Stepanak if this lead they had comfortably all night is now gone they're two points away from losing it with 127 left so Brennan to trigger on the sideline here is Wills he goes across Hargraves Caressi Thinking about that three, Brennan outside. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 20 seconds left. Brennan dumps it inside. Alexander has it blocked on the baseline. Gets it back, and it's going to be a jump ball and Stepanak possession. And great job there by Alan Griffin. He threw the ball away on the last inbound, and right there makes up for it with the block that results in the jump ball. And Stepanak now will take a timeout with 108 left, leading by two. Still plenty of time, 108 left in the fourth. And the Crusaders with the two-point lead, Stepanak Lou in this position several times this year, close games, they haven't panicked. I saw a little bit of a panic turnover on the last possession. At home, you should be comfortable as they're coming out here to try and just barely hang on here with 108 left. Stepanak to inbound, they get it in to Davis. He races up the sideline, takes it to the hoop and scores! R.J. Davis with a burst to the hoop. A chance for a three-point play. You know, he got beat down the floor. He had the basketball in his hand. He got beat down the floor, but he still managed to go by the defender and get that shot up and in. An unbelievable play there by the freshman. And Davis' free throw is good. He completes a three-point play. And just like that, it's a five-point game, 50 to 45. Here's Wills at the other end, takes the three, doesn't go. Ball goes out of bounds, off of Stepanak. 
It'll be Iona prep basketball with 58.3 seconds remaining. It's a two possession game. What a huge play by R.J. Davis. A great job by Pat Masteroni there, drawing that up there on that. To break the pressure there, we just sent Davis long. A little bit of a delay, but it was all intended to him to get the basketball going straight towards the basket. He broke away, and then made a nice fake, and took it into the basket and got the foul. So Nick Brennan to trigger far side. He gets it in to Wills. Bryce Wills flips it around. Wills gets it back. Brennan in the corner. Jump shot doesn't go by Josh Alexander. What a nice job by Hargraves to get the rebound. Keeps it alive. 42 seconds left in the fourth. Brennan with a huge three. Oh, from way downtown, Nick Brennan. Give them enough opportunities. They're gonna finally make a three point shot and finally Nick Brennan does. Another offensive rebound kept alive there by Jacob Hargraves. Kicks the ball around, circles around the top, and gets the hands of Nick Brennan. But we've seen Brennan, Lou, pass off a lot of three-point shots tonight. And right there, he realized this Fox, this game's almost over. I gotta make one of these. And he makes a very big one. Another timeout for Iona Prep. So trailing by two, 38.9 seconds left. 50 to 48, and both teams with 10 team fouls. So from here on out, both teams will be in the bonus. They'll be shooting two free throws. It will be Stepanak possession following the timeout. They'll look to get it in, no, no doubt. Iona Prep will go with a full court press. However, with 38 seconds left, got to think the Gales will just try to play some tough defense here in the early part of this possession. And they reach in quickly. It's the right move. I mean, foul quickly, 37 seconds left. Double bonus, and it'll be the guy that Stepanek wants the line, Jordan Means. So Means at the line. Stepanek has two timeouts remaining. Iona Prep, none. No timeouts left for the Gales. Means misses the first. And that is huge. And Vic Carollo just yelling out to his team, <laughs> no timeouts remaining, just reminding them, don't call timeout. Second is good. It's a three-point game, a one-possession game, though, with 37 seconds left. There's a lot of time left. Here's Caressi. Brings it up. About a two second differential between the shot clock and game clock, and that shot forced up. And Stepanak gets the rebound, and immediately Iona prep fouls. I think even Stepanak was a little surprised that Hargraves took that ball to the basket. Nobody there to rebound. And now RJ Davis at the line. Davis will be at the line, 20.7 seconds left. Into the game for Amber Prep, number 20, Chris Berry. At the front line, it's RJ Davis. Chris Berry checks into the lineup for Iona Prep. And the free throw's good, huge free throw by RJ Davis. Might, might have sealed it. 52-48. No timeouts left for Anna Prep. That, that was, these are both huge. 53-48, five point game. It's a two possession game. So Iona Prep is gonna need to score quickly. Alexander for three doesn't go. Rebound pulled down by Brennan. He gets it back, dishes underneath to Wills, puts it up, gets the offensive rebound, can't score. Finally, Alexander puts it in. But just five seconds left. 
And a quick foul. Called on Iona Prep with 3.4 seconds left. The ball was handed to Alan Griffin. Excuse me, Lou. The clock's going to keep running in, in boys high school basketball. The clock keeps running. So he didn't really have to inbound. Uh, you know, he could let some more time run off, but a foul away from the ball to stop the clock and put Means on the line. Now to try and seal it with 3.4 left. They can't possibly lose if he makes the free throw. And he does. So Jordan Means hits the first. 54 to 50. Stepanak would appear on the way to defeating Iona Prep for the second time this year. Hits both. 55 to 50. 3.4 seconds remaining. Wills puts it up at the buzzer. Doesn't go. And that's it. Stepanak defeats Iona Prep 55 to 50. Crusaders improved a 14 and 6. 10 and 3 in the division. And a huge win for Stepanak as they hold on after Iona yeah. Prep really made a good run at him in the fourth quarter. The good news is it only took one night to play this game. It didn't take a whole week to finish it up. But a quality win, and I didn't think either of these teams, how evenly matched I thought these two teams were all season long coming into the year. I didn't think either one was going to sweep the other, and here's Stepanak now winning both against Iona Prep. They own Westchester County, the number one ranked team in the Hudson Valley. Stays on top. So Archbishop Stepanak with a huge win, defeating Iona Prep. Gales dropped to 12 and 8. Now, number 20, Archbishop Stepanak defeats number 18, Iona Prep. And uh, we'll be back to talk about the Crusaders' huge win in just a few moments. Once again, the final score, Archbishop Stepanak 55, Iona Prep 50. Welcome back to News 12 Varsity's Game Time. Huge win for Stepanak as they defeat Iona Prep by the score of 55 to 50. Kevin Devaney standing by with our player of the game. Kevin. Thanks, Lou. Here with R.J. Davis, the freshman, going to the free throw line and knocking down free throws to beat Iona Prep. How good did those feel at the end? It feels good, you know, just to contribute and knock down the uh, like game-winning free throws. It feels good for our team to be our rivalry, so it was good. Rumor was you were sick coming out here tonight. I thought you looked maybe a little sluggish early on. Did you gain more energy as this game went by? Yeah, just uh, drink more fluids, eat, just trying to stay healthy and get ready for the game. Some people like myself said, I don't know if Stepanak could beat Iona Prep twice, mm -hmm. and now you've done it. Uh, how good is this team? How much better have you gotten, and what does it mean to do it twice? Uh, we just want to prove that Dallas wrong. You know, we have a hardworking team. The bench is into it. Everyone's into it. So we love each other, and we'll fight for any anything. You guys have won eight out of nine. What do you credit this to? What's been the biggest key for this, this stretch you guys have been on? Uh, hard work, you know. Um, just in the gym, practicing, making shots, working on free throws, you know, executing at the end. People check your ID to make sure you're really a freshman? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm a, I'm a freshman. Petite, yeah. <laughs> you're freshman. So obviously a freshman out there. And to do this, I mean, what does this mean to you personally to, to continue to have games like this? Uh, it means a lot, you know. It's like have confidence in myself and like to help my team make, to win. Uh, like coach trust me, um, like crucial time. So I'm, I'm ready to take that lead. The freshman showing poise on the court. In the interview, RJ Davis, great job. Lou, back over to you. So another big win for Stepanak as they now have won eight of their last nine games and they defeat Iona Prep for the second time this season. The Crusaders win it by five. That'll do it here from Archbishop Stepanak High School for Kevin Devaney and our entire News 12 varsity team. I'm Lou Brogno. Thanks for joining us. Once again, your final score, Stepanak 55, Iona Prep 50.